when I think of branded content, I usually think very short form, but that's not really the case anymore, is it? It's it's really never been the case, and I think there's there's still a lot of testing of what works, and um, it's funny, we've been looking lately at standards and um, levels of engagement on some of our YouTube channels for our clients, and it really isn't a matter of how long the content is, it's a matter of you know how interesting it is, how relevant it is, and the quality of it. And quality is a funny word as well. If it's, it's not necessarily the highest production value, it's the most relevant and compelling content. So it's a matter of you know the writing, the um, the participants, the topics, rather than you know is it in HD? Is it um, in the most beautiful settings? I think we often um, think of quality in a different way than YouTube uh, audiences think in quality. So as far as the length of video content is concerned, I think we tend to think of mobile as a place for short form. But to be honest, if you're going to engage in mobile and there's more and more research coming out that says people are looking for longer form in mobile because they're looking for an, a sustained experience, maybe they're waiting for a bus, they're meeting some friends. So they want to find that one place instead of hopping around and really dive deep into that content. So it's all about story. And if the story can be told in 30 seconds, great. If a story needs 10, 20, maybe even 30 minutes, the consumer is ready for that kind of story as well. I've heard a lot about branded entertainment. I've heard a lot about native advertising. I'm sure they're very different. They're not that different. And I think native advertising is another form of branded entertainment. It's in context, within editorial context. Branded entertainment can take the shape of a two-minute film about healthcare that lives on the Wall Street Journal's healthcare page, or it can take the shape of a 30-minute healthcare doc that lives on its own bespoke microsite. So. It's really about kind of where things are living, and um, they're not competing ideas. Abby, I can't help but thinking, back in the early days of television, when you had programs like the Texaco Star Theater, where Texaco really branded around the content, that this is more or less uh, the same thing or very similar, but then it, it can't really be. Um, what are your thoughts? It is very similar. It's kind of a renaissance of the time when um, you, you, the brands were integrated into the programming. So you had the Colgate Hour, Colgate Palm Olive Hour. You had soap operas that were literally found or funded by soap brands. So they were for the housewife that was at home. So it was about um, you know share of mind and being kind of relevant and present within this programming. I think what's different nowadays is that the programming is much more closely aligned with the brands image or the brand's ideals of, of what they stand for and what they want to talk about. So um, when it's done well, I think there's still those sponsorships these days. Um, if you look at American Idol, Coca-Cola is all over within the program. They have the Coca-Cola Red Room, uh, they have the Coke Cups sitting with the judges. So Ford, I think, is a big part of that as well. But when it's done really, really well, the, the brand is just seamlessly integrated. And the Lego movie is such an awesome example of you know, Legos really having spent some time, I think over the past maybe two decades, acquiring licensee rights to major entertainment properties and then building that all into this huge Lego movie that has a really nice message. People go in and they welcome the idea of Legos funding this movie because it's a fun product, um, it's relevant, there's a great message, and it's, it's good for kids as well. What would you say are the biggest challenges in your job right now? I think the biggest challenge is also the biggest opportunity, and it's this idea of brands being able to let go of the messaging and let go of the need to sell and just be able to embrace a topic and own a conversation or, or host a conversation, really. And that's where you see just unbelievable success, and the Dove FBI sketches is a great example, and there's a really cute... Um, short a one or two minute piece on kind of women feeling camera shy and it's there's never a point where they're trying they show a bar of soap or body wash or deodorant it's all about the inside of, of real beauty and when you let go of the need to sell 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 and you embrace the idea of creating great content so people have an affinity for the brand and they want to consume more and you can just host it on your YouTube channel without paid media and you have this really compelling insight. 
I mean, the opportunities are tremendous and it's so exciting and it's so hard to get, you know, not only clients to buy in, but then clients, management, steer committees, um, you know, CFOs, CMOs to take that risk. Um, so for those that are brave and are willing to go out there and do it, um, the opportunity is rich and it is there.